Welcome to the National Palace in Mexico City, where we'll tour 600 years of Mexican history as seen through a mural painted by Diego Rivera between 1929 and 1935. Present-day Mexico City is built on the ancient Aztec city of Tenochtitlan, founded around 1325 in the midst of the city-states that remained after the fall of the Toltec Empire. Tenochtitlan eventually reached a population exceeding a quarter of a million, and was one of the largest and richest urban areas in the entire world when the Spaniards arrived in 1519. The founders of Tenochtitlan began their empire on a small island in the middle of Lake Texcoco, precisely upon the spot that they had seen an eagle perched upon a cactus, holding a snake in its talons. Though the dozen city-states surrounding Lake Texcoco each had a population that eventually exceeded 10,000, Tenochtitlan quickly grew to surpass them all and become the largest empire in Central America. Its markets represented a diverse collaboration of languages, cultures, and commodities, from as far north as the Pueblo of modern-day New Mexico to as far south as the Inca of modern-day Peru. This panel partially deals with many different aspects of the creation of pigments and the dyed cloths that you see hanging here on the left. Here an old lady gives advice on the painting of a historical tapestry in front of a priest reading a codex that depicts the future of a newborn baby. In the background, workers are shown felling trees and creating charcoal for use in heating vats of dye, while others are shown picking the cotton that will be used to make fabric. The foreground of this panel deals with the manufacture of stone and metal decorations and accoutrements used by priests and royalty in ceremonies. And here in the background we see workers collecting the copper and gold from a nearby river. The Aztecs had sophisticated techniques for smelting gold, copper, and silver, but never went so far as to make alloys of bronze. But their ability to fashion masks and ornaments out of pure obsidian was unparalleled in the ancient world. Here we see the friendship of the Totonaco and the Mayan people in front of elaborate games and ceremonies. These events brought together lots of completely different people from rival city-states all over Central America. This panel shows a man harvesting latex to make rubber, a craft that the people of Central America had employed for thousands of years. This panel depicts the agriculture of the ancient Aztecs, the man on the right planting corn, and the woman on the left making tortillas, in front of vast fields and the tallest mountain in Mexico. Here cocoa beans are being used as money to buy goods, while above, a family is harvesting and processing the cocoa beans to make chocolate. This panel depicts many different aspects of the creation of paper used to make scrolls. It also highlights the importance of the agave plant in everything from making needles to medicines and food. Here we see a man speaking the history of the Aztec encounter with the Spanish in 1519. This final giant panel in the hallway depicts a summary of the Spanish enslavement of the Aztecs. The green-faced fellow in center left is Hernán Cortés, the Spanish conquistador responsible for conquering the Aztecs. He's shown with a sickly complexion to represent the diseases brought to the New World by the Spanish. The panel below depicts the enslaved Aztecs growing and producing the various foods brought to America from Europe. This blue-eyed baby carried on the back of an Aztec concubine of a conquistador depicts rapid genetic assimilation. In the background, we see that every aspect of the colonization of the New World was facilitated by the total enslavement of the entire population. Even as the natives were being forced into slavery, they were also being forced into accepting the religious doctrine of their captors. Within little more than an instant, virtually the entire civilization was lost. 
Coming up the grand stairwell from the ground level of the National Palace is a depiction of the 400 years of Mexican history after the invasion by the Spanish in 1519. Each of the seven arches in the grand staircase depict a monumental event in Mexican history. The arch on the right shows the Aztec Empire as it was just before the arrival of the Spanish. The next arch shows the invasion of Mexico by the United States in 1847, followed by the drafting of the Mexican Constitution in 1857. The central arch shows the major figures after the War of Independence in 1810. The next arch shows the major figures of the Mexican Revolution between 1910 and 1920, followed by an arch depicting the Mexican repulsion of the French forces in 1862. And the seventh arch depicts Diego Rivera's vision of how the protests in the 1920s would lead to a bright socialist future. The sun was painted upside down over the pyramid to depict the decline of the empire. The lower part of the first panel depicts the internal divisions among the native groups surrounding Tenochtitlan in the time just prior to the Spanish invasion. While being enslaved using all methods of torture and intimidation, overpowered technologically, disintegrated culturally, starved physically, the natives were also forced to accept the religion of their captors and pay an endless tribute. Until ultimately, Tenochtitlan, one of the largest and most prosperous cities in the entire world, was disassembled brick by brick by its own citizens. And so this is the theme of the central wall and the grand staircase at the National Palace, how Mexican history rests figuratively and literally on the foundations of the Aztec Empire. In the middle of the central arch is the Catholic priest Miguel Hidalgo, who began the Mexican War of Independence in 1810 by starting a revolt that inspired nearly 90,000 poor farmers to take up arms against the Spanish. Agustin Iturbide, a general in the Mexican army, ended the War of Independence by taking control of Mexico City in 1821. He then became president and was later declared emperor of Mexico. Vicente Guerrero took over as second president of Mexico in a coup against Agustin after serving as general in the war. He played a key role in giving citizenship to all inhabitants of Mexico independent of race or skin color and created public schools. Emiliano Zapata, top left, Pancho Villa, also in a sombrero, and Pascual Orozco, holding the lower end of the land and liberty flag, were all allies and leading figures in the Mexican Revolution almost a hundred years later. They each saw relentless opposition from General Álvaro Obregón during the revolution, who became 39th president of Mexico, and later was succeeded by Calles, who founded the party that was to rule Mexico for 70 years. This first arch on the right shows the invasion of Mexico by the United States, represented here as an eagle, in 1847, that resulted in the cessation of half of the territory of Mexico. The second arch from the right deals with the drafting of the 1857 Mexican Constitution. During his many terms as president over 22 years, Lopez de Santa Anna, top left, lost more than half the territory of Mexico to the U.S. in the Mexican-American War of 1848. Then Ignacio Comenfort, shown below him, presided over the drafting of the 1857 Constitution that established the freedom of speech, of the press, of assembly, and the abolition of slavery in debtors' prisons. Other provisions and reform laws, partially written by Benito Juarez, shown here gesturing to Pope Pius IX, restricted privileges of the church, such as in land holdings, judicial authority, and control over education. They also sought to redistribute the wealth accumulated in the Catholic Church, shown here as gold coins brought out through the church's broken door. Here we see Ignacio Zariosa in front of the fort at Loreto, where he led the Mexican army to an unlikely victory over French forces on May 5, 1862. The French army of Napoleon III had invaded after Benito Juarez, seen here facing the viewer, issued a moratorium on the payment of foreign debts. After the initial defeat of the French on Cinco de Mayo 1862, the French invaded again soon afterwards and imposed Maximilian, shown here with a blonde beard, as emperor. After three years in exile, Juarez and his government returned to overthrow the empire, they restored the republic, and had Maximilian executed. 
This arch shows the key figures of the Mexican Revolution from 1910 to 1920. Profirio Diaz, here on the left, ruled Mexico for 35 years and created a booming economy for the super-rich, in part by opening oil production to Henry Clay Pierce, shown here in a top hat in front of his oil wells. Until in May 1911, Francisco Madero and Noria Pino Suarez overthrew Diaz with the help of Emiliano Zapata, who soon afterwards drafted the Plan of Ayala with his friend Montaña that set out a vision of land reform and denounced Madero for betraying the revolutionary ideals. Two years later, Huerta overthrew Madero and had him executed in a counter-revolutionary coup, but only ruled for 17 months before resigning to Carvajal, who oversaw the month-long transfer of power to Carranza, who, as one of the main leaders of the Mexican Revolution, had already defeated Huerta's counter-revolutionary regime. This panel shows the political and economic situation in Mexico in the 20s. The first wife of Diego Rivera, Guadalupe Marin, shown in a red sweater, and Frida Kahlo, sitting directly behind her, are shown teaching the socialist doctrine of Karl Marx to the children. Karl Marx is shown here at the top in front of a rising sun pointing the way to a new future for Mexico in front of protests. Below Karl Marx we see the tubes and framework of the Industrial Revolution insulating separate sections. The one on the top right contains three characters, each representing the army, the government, and the Catholic Church and showing the collusion between the three. Below that on the bottom right we see the wealthiest individuals in the high society. On the top left there's J.P. Morgan, Sinclair, Vanderbilt, and Rockefeller all together representing the stock market. Here in front of a thriving civilization we see Leon Trotsky teaching socialism to all races of people. Though he himself was an atheist, Diego Rivera painted his own self-portrait here as a Catholic priest kissing a prostitute. In the very center of the industrial complex, the Virgin Mary is shown depicting religion, and it's revealed that all of the pipes surrounding the different segments of society are funneling money out of the hands of the people made to pay exorbitant taxes. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the 600-year history of Mexico City from the 1320s to the 1920s, as seen through the famous Diego Rivera mural in the National Palace on Zocalo Square in the heart of Mexico City.